This is my Tandy Science Fair 201 Electronic Project Lab. The Science Fair 201 Electronic Project Lab is an educational kit from Tandy or Radio Shack to teach kids electronics. It allows them to create electronic circuits from a manual without needing to solder. The user is given a board with all sorts of components on it to play around with. I noticed this box at a local thrift store and it looked very familiar. In fact, it was the exact same kit that I had when I was a kid. It's manufactured by Tandy, or Radio Shack as it's known in the US. Catalog number 28265. And it's an educational board for teaching kids electronics. It was released at around 1987. So this turned out to be a great nostalgic find. It was sold at the thrift store for only 5 euros, which is a real bargain for a set like this. The concept of the kit is actually quite simple. You have a large number of components that you can play around with, and you have these metal springs that you can use to wire them together, so there is no soldering required. The Science Fair uses 6 AA batteries as its power source, so it's very convenient. The set comes with a great book, which is as big as the box itself, containing the details of all the different experiments that you can do. As you get started with one of the 200 projects in the book, you'll end up wiring all of the components together using these little wires. Different sizes are included in the box, and they all come pre-tinned. So you start by selecting a project from the book looking at its wiring schemes and get to work. You start hooking up the various components together with the provided wires in the box. So this is probably the most time consuming part and it is kind of error prone especially at first. When you finished wiring everything together it's time to do your testing. We attach our six AA batteries and do whatever is needed to start the project. In this case, hitting the key. On the front of the science fair you have LEDs, buttons and switches that you can use to interact with your experiment. By pressing the button here we hear a popping noise. When I opened the box I noticed that there was a pamphlet included besides the unit and the, and the manual. I'm sorry it's in Dutch, but it's actually a, a pamphlet from 1988 from a local company here that sold all kinds of electronics devices and kits that you could assemble yourself. So it was really nice to, to find this, this item in the box. Next up we have the science fair unit itself, obviously, with all of its components, the various elements on the front that you can interact with. Pretty cool stuff. You can see the battery holder here for the six AA batteries. Luckily they were removed. And here you get a view of all the, the components which are on the board. And the famous springs that are used to wire everything together. Moving along we have the actual book or manual which is included in the case. It's actually the, the, about the same size as the case. It has lots of uh, you know, really cool graphical elements on how to build the circuits and how to explain them. Uh, I think the, the book itself is just worth, worth getting. And finally, you have some, some wires uh, that you can use to do the various experiments. On the front of the science fair, you have various elements that you can use to interact with your circuit. There's a tuning knob that you can use, a control knob that also acts as a switch, there's an analog meter that can be used, an 8 segment LED display, light sensor, LEDs, another LED, a switch, we have a speaker, a key that we can use, and we have two terminals for interacting with external systems. The board itself contains a large number of components. It has lots of resistors with different values that you can use in your circuits. It has standard silicon diodes. 
it has two transformers the actual power source delivered by the double a batteries it has a relay it has an antenna a germanium diode transistors capacitors all different types And it even has two integrated circuits that you can use. At the bottom, we see the components that resemble or represent the various knobs and switches which are located at the front of the device. The book which is included in the box does a really great job of explaining the theory behind all of these circuits. It's visually very attractive and it lays out all of the different components which are in the, in the box. At first, every project is shown using uh, a wiring scheme of, of how you should conduct the project. There's room for notes that the user can, can add. And there's also a wiring scheme with numbers uh, at the bottom. There's also a brief explanation of what the project is supposed to do. But after the first couple of projects where the wiring schemes are shown just by basically showing how you should wire everything up uh, on the board, things uh, move up a step and they're actually uh, not using these, these wire diagrams anymore, but, but they're using proper electronic schemas. So as the user of this kit, you begin by simply wiring everything together without knowing the, the details of the, the theory behind it. But the book does a really good job of explaining these, these schemas. As you can see, there are lots of them, ranging from really simple ones to really complex ones. So all in all, perhaps the book itself is, is perhaps the most important item of, of, of everything which is included in the box. It's a, it's a really nice... Uh, Nice document. Now every component which is listed in the schema has these numbers uh, attached to it. And these numbers correspond to the actual components which are on the kit. So when we start to hook up this LED, for example, we can find the LED on the board using the numbers. Same goes with the key. So the key is located on the kit. And the power supply, the three volts that we will be applying here, can also be located on the board. So in order to create a schema, we'll start from the resistor here and go to our little switch. We'll hook up our switch to the power supply. From the power supply, we can go to our LED. And to complete the circuit, we move from our LED back into the resistor. After inserting our batteries, we can do the test hit the key and see that the LED lights up. Unfortunately, I hit a snag upon creating my first very basic circuit. I noticed that the LEDs on the front wouldn't light up when supplying voltage to them. I tested it with an external uh, LED and it seemed to work fine. So the problem was with the internal LEDs on the science fair itself. So this led me to do an unexpected uh, or unplanned teardown of the science fair in itself. 
On the back there was this kind of carbon board piece uh, that you could pry out to get to the internals of the science fair. So I continued with that. So after some wiggling, I was able to get the, the cardboard uh, out of the of the bottom and then expose the internals of the system. So it's a very simple design in which it's just basically a bunch of wires hooking everything uh, together. So here we have an internal view of the of the front of the science fair. Here we can see the two uh, integrated circuits and how they are wired. Here we can see the internals of the of the front where we have the the tuning knob which is wired together we have another control knob also acting as a switch we have the uv meter we have the circuit for the uh, seven segment led display we have uh, a plastic board which holds all of the leds together as well as the light emitting sensor we have the speaker the key and the external uh, connectors. So the first order of business was removing the plastic cover that holds all of the LEDs. So this involved unscrewing a couple of screws in order to get access to the, to the different LEDs. Now that we have better access to the individual LEDs, it's time to remove the wires connecting them so that we can uh, start replacing them. Now that we have better access to the LEDs, we can actually start removing them as we'll be replacing them with new LEDs. With all of the LEDs removed, we can look at replacing them with new ones but not before we test them first. A convenient way for testing LEDs is just using a coin cell battery. By placing the two leads on the opposite sides of the coin cell, the plus and the minus, we can actually verify if the LED works. This is a brand new LED that I will be installing. So all we had to do now was to attach our new LEDs onto the plastic board Bend the lead a little bit so that the LEDs would remain in place. Clip the leads a little bit so that we could solder on the wires a little bit more easily. Start soldering everything back together again. And do a quick test to ensure that we didn't mess up the wiring. So there it was, my review slash teardown of the Tandy Science Fair 201 Electronic Project Lab. A really nice trip, uh, nostalgic trip down memory lane. A beautiful piece of hardware with lots of components on it, giving the people the opportunity to, to get acquainted with electronics. Uh, beautiful documentation in the book, not only covering the the, the individual projects in the kit, but also the theory behind it, beautifully uh, illustrated. I highly recommend everybody that, that comes across this to, to pick it up, bring it home, play with it a little bit. Uh, I'm sure you'll have lots of fun with it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more retro content coming your way. Thank you. Bye-bye.